Hello everyone, this is Cynthia on Embracing His Word. Well, I am certainly grateful and thankful for the goodness of the Lord today. I did a video series, uh, I'm doing a video series, the first part um, I have recorded. This is my third video. This one is a continuation of Healing for the Wounded Heart. And you know, at some point in our lives, we all experience wounding and deep hurt in our heart and in our soul. So I discussed in my last video, some of the signs and symptoms of a wounded heart. Um, before I go into the signs of uh, a wounded heart, I wanna talk about um, a, what a wounded heart is. It occurs when someone or something brings hurt to your emotions or some form of abuse for example Proverbs 26 uh, 22 says the words of a tail barrier are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly so we see here in this particular verse it talks about wounds going down into the innermost parts of the belly and so a lot of times we experience wounds and and we want to go through life um, pretending or putting on a facade as if everything is okay, that we have that supposed peace and joy, whereas there's no peace, there's no joy because there are deep wounds and deep hurt within our soul. So let's look at some of the symptoms and the signs and the warnings of, um, of a deep wound in your heart or in your soul. Uh, some of the uh, deep, some of the signs that I would say would be, uh, for example, you're easily offended, uh, offense comes your way, and you have difficulty in dealing with the offense. When when I talk about the word offense, you want to remind yourself when you are experiencing offense that oftentimes that offense. You need to think of that word as a bait from Satan because it, it is definitely a bait from Satan because Satan desires to catch you into a trap so that you will be offended, so that you will be angry and that you will not respond or react in the proper or godly manner. I want you to also, when you think of the word offense or when offense comes, I want you to think of the word. In my word studies, uh, this word it also means scandalon. Now, scandalon, uh, it, it says it properly, the trigger of a trap or the mechanism closing a trap down on unsuspecting victim. You see, the enemy wants us to be unsuspecting. And the enemy comes in a subtle manner through offense. And if he can get us into bitterness, resentment, and anger, and, and allow it to just reside in the crevices of our heart, then he has trapped us. He has thrown us the bait and we have taken it. So we want to be proactive against offenses that come our way, remembering that when we experience offense, you can easily do a flash prayer going before God and said, Lord, I am offended. I, I do not like what just happened to me. And but I want to do what is right. I don't want the enemy to get a grip in my heart with bitterness and resentment toward this person. So Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. I surrender my emotions to you and I ask that you strengthen me and to walk in your ways. Fill my heart with your love, with your kindness and forgiveness, I pray in Jesus' name. And so if you have to say this prayer uh, a few times during the day or even the next few days, you want to be proactive uh, in preventing the enemy to gaining entrapment uh, to bitterness and resentment. So you want to do this whenever you feel that God, the Holy Spirit is nudging you to do this. Now the next, another way, a source that a wound of a wounded heart comes from is uh, our own sinful behavior. 
I want to read on uh, Psalms 25, 18. Psalms 25, 18 says, Look upon mine, uh, mine affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. So we see that our very own sins can bring pain and affliction in our lives. So we, on a daily basis, we want to get before God, spend some quality time with God in prayer. Even if it's just a few minutes in the morning time and you have to go to work, you want to uh, surrender your heart. Say, Lord, I give you my heart. Help me to walk in your ways. Help me to walk with a pure heart and to truly reflect Jesus Christ. So we don't want to be committing sins and invite affliction and pain in our soul. Another way that wounds can enter into our heart is through calamity, where one is overcome by experience. And a good example is this, is in the book of Job. Um, let me find that for you, please. So in Job chapter 3, verses 25, it says, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So fear can also open a wound into your heart and, and cause and wreak havoc in your life. And so if you know about what happened all happened to Job was because he opened that door for for fear to just enter into his life and take control and wreak havoc in his life so we want to, to make sure we overcome these things by surrendering our hearts completely unto the Lord and trusting fully in God another way that wounds can come into our heart is a result of the sins of the forefathers Let's turn to Exodus 34, Exodus chapter 34, and verse 6 through 7. It says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty visiting visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children and unto the third and to the fourth generation so right here the scripture um, shows us plainly that the sins and iniquities of our forefathers can also visit um, the bloodline if those um, if that person has not surrendered their lives to Christ and taken a stand against the iniquities of the forefathers those iniquities can definitely infiltrate a person's life so we can be wounded somewhere in our heart and have some type of bondage because of the sins and iniquities of our forefathers or our parents or grandparents. And so we want to make sure we take care of those issues, not, not allow those things to just lay dormant or uh, continue to wreak havoc in our lives, but we want to be proactive to, uh, taking care of generational uh, iniquities, taking care of generational curses that may be yet operating in our lives. Another way that uh, wounds can come into our heart is a result from uh, drug and alcohol use. Turn with me to Proverbs uh, chapter 23. So this particular chapter is ref is talking about uh, using alcohol, and you can also consider this uh, if if you're in bondage to uh, drug use. Uh, 
this also would be in reference to that too also so it says who hath this is verse 29 who hath woe who hath sorrow who hath contentions who hath babbling who hath wounds without cause who hath redness of eyes they that tarry long at the wine they that go to seek mixed wine look not down upon the wine when it is red when it giveth his color in the cup when it moveth itself aright at the last it bite it like a serpent and sting it like an adder so right here this scriptures lets us know that um we can get ourselves in and much trouble in our soul by being having an addiction to uh, alcohol, an addiction to drugs that um, that's, that we're just trying to cover up our wounds and hurts and disappointments with alcohol and drug use. So this uh, lets us know, especially in verse 32, that in th when it talks about uh, a serpent like at last it bite it like a serpent that is definitely a demonic force entering into the life of the person and taking control so we don't want any dark spirits entering into our lives because we are addicted to alcohol addicted to drug use so let's take care of those issues another one that we want to look at how wounds enter into our lives uh, is through occult involvement. Turn with me to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. So Leviticus verse chapter 20, verse 6, it says, And the soul that turned after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him all from among his people. Okay, so we're talking about uh, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. It says, The soul that turned out the such as have familiar spirits. Uh, in the commentary, it says, The man or woman that has respect unto them seeks after them and inquires of them in order to get knowledge of them. Of, of things and after wizards who pretend to tell fortunes and discover lost and stolen goods to go a whoring after them for to consult them is to forsake the Lord and have recourse to Satan and his instruments to relinquish their trust in God and put confidence in them and attribute such things to them as only belong to God even the knowledge of things future and this is to commit idolatry, which is spiritual adultery. And I can say uh, when people go out the fortune tellers or are seeking um, some, some guidance or future fortune telling through these type of people, they are definitely committing adultery. Um, and it opens the door for poverty spirit to come into their lives. And also, it uh, also God sets his face against those types of uh, actions when the, when the, especially when a believer um, attempts to find knowledge through these means. So you want to make sure you're aligning your heart with God, trusting God, not seeking out fortune tellers, not seeking out your horoscope, and not going to these uh, these type of things to find out knowledge because God is definitely against them. It says, I will even set my face against that soul. Show like resentment and, and indignation as at him that gives his seed to Moloch and will cut him off from among his people. So we don't want to be cut off from God, but we want to definitely make sure that we are surrendering our lives to Jesus Christ for our hurts, our wounds, our disappointments, those things that we need. We go forth in faith, uh, seeking God's wisdom and guidance. Now, a lot of times people think, you know, they can bury their hurts, their wounds, and those things will go away in time. Time does not heal wounds. 
those hurts, those wounds, they will never go away if you do not confront them and surrender them to the Lord Jesus Christ. In order for them, for you to experience the complete healing of the Lord, those things definitely have to be surrendered to him. Now, here are some of the uh, physical symptoms that a person may experience that's deeply wounded in the heart and soul. They may experience uh, nerve disorders, uh, allergies, uh, stomach problems, headaches, insomnia. Uh, this is definitely uh, some things that people experience in their lives. I remember praying for a, a elderly lady that had insomnia and her deep wound was that years ago her mother wounded her in some way and she had not forgiven uh, her mother even though her mother had passed away so these are examples of deep wounds that can affect the physical body unforgiveness and bitterness will cause insomnia Another way, uh, some of the uh, mental uh, symptoms that a person may experience is depression, fits of anger and rage, confusion, various fears, shyness, and dominance. So you can look at Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14, and read the verse, what it says about that. And also the spiritual ways that manifest uh, symptoms in a person's life is nightmares, hearing voices, seeing unusual things, lack of control of self. So these are some of the spiritual uh, things that may manifest in a person, person's life. And you can also refer to, uh, to Matthew chapter 18, verse 34. Now, the ways that people respond uh, to deep wounds and hurts, some people respond by backing away from the situation to allow time for healing. Time, as I said before, time does not bring forth healing. They often turn, people often turn inward and brood over their hurts and disappointments. The hurts become like a big sore. Uh, rising just waiting for someone to prick it with a sharp word then out comes all the corruption or the infection of anger bitterness hate revenge and fear and then the rejection it it only brings forth more hurts more wounds and more disappointment so that's why we have to deal in a godly and righteous way concerning our hurts and wounds and not allow them to continue to fester. Other people respond by immediately striking back, trying to balance their hurt with anger and revenge, or by trying to protect themselves from further hurt to allow time for healing. And I'm, I know a lot of times people experience hurt and wounds and they will, they will put up barriers, preventing uh, people from coming into their lives, preventing people. If you sense that you're preventing people from getting close to you, there are still some wounds of rejection that need to be healed and re need to be uh, you need to be delivered from. So make sure you take care of areas of rejection in your life. And 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 ministering to to uh, many. Uh, people, I have uh, come across people that have held wounds that's been so long standing in their hearts. And when they come forward for, uh, forward for healing or for deliverance, um, I, I ask them about those things and I help them to confront those issues so that they can get it out get that infection out, that anger, that resentment, that unforgiveness, get it out, give it all to the Lord Jesus Christ so that that will not be a blockage to their healing. So when they release all that stuff to the Lord Jesus Christ, then comes the healing power, the restoring power to heal their soul, to bring forth peace, to bring forth stability in their mind, in their life, in their relationships with others, to restore the right identity. So it's so important that individuals learn how to just release it and give it all to God. Now, God's provision for us, 
he has paid the price through his son, Jesus Christ, because the scripture says he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Not that we are going to be healed. Jesus have already paid the price. The healing has already taken place. It's up to you to receive that healing, appropriating by faith what Christ has already done for you. It's exactly like receiving salvation. The Bible says when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. We also have to confess our sins, our faults, so that we can actually receive the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the provision has already been made for us. It's up to us to receive it. God healed David's heart and he will also heal yours. So there are uh, steps of preparation. I will talk about that on my next video, but I would like to just um, just pray over you before we go. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for those that are listening to this video. I pray that you would just begin to touch their hearts, the deep wounds and hurts and disappointments that they have experienced. Begin to, the healing process today, Father. I pray in the powerful name of Jesus Christ.